Hi, Michael Larsen here again, and in 1998 we got a new technology for sound that made PC games so much more immersive. Perhaps you know exactly what I'm talking about here, and of course it's not the Commodore 64, but we do need to go back to the 80s to learn the history behind this technology. But let's pretend now that we are kind of, that we go back into the past, so let's watch some old TV. In the early 1980s, Atari believed that games could be more than what they were, and that they could perhaps rival TV and film. They assembled a team of researchers to start developing virtual reality. Among them was Scott Fisher. But already in 1983, the research team was dissolved, because of the video game crash. Scott Fisher was then invited to talk about head-mounted displays at NASA in 1984, and in 1985 NASA hired him and he continued his work with virtual reality. Being able to look around in this three-dimensional virtual reality, they also needed three-dimensional sound, from a headset with only two speakers. So in 1989, they got a hold of Scott Foster, who founded the company Crystal Engineering to build the 3D sound system for NASA. They built something called a Convoltron, this was two cars that you could use in a regular personal computer. The Convoltron had 128 parallel processors, claimed to be 20 times faster than any ordinary digital sound processing system. In 1996, Aurel Semiconductor acquired Crystal Engineering and changed the name of the technology to Aurel 3D. In 1997, they released a sound chip with a 3D technology called Aurel Vortex for use in sound cards. And in 1998, we got the Diamond Monster Sound MX300 with Aurel Vortex 2 and their latest technology, Aurel 3D 2.0. It was considered to be the best sound card you could get with amazing positional audio. Let's dive a little deeper into this technology. It uses HRTF, but what is it? HRTF stands for Head Related Transfer Function. We only have two ears but we still perceive sound in three dimensions. This is because the sounds will be altered in different ways depending on where it goes before it hits your eardrum. If a sound comes from behind you, it will hit the back of your head, this alters the sound, and then you hear it, and, and then you interpret it as the sound coming from behind you. HRTF is a mathematical model of this altering of the sound. Every person is different and therefore there is some variations in how the sound will be altered so the positional audio in this sound card may work better for one person than the other. The original HRTF Crystal Engineering developed for NASA could play up to four different audio streams from different positions. A3D 2.0 could play up to 16 different audio streams. The first A3D chip from 97 had a sample rate of 22 kHz, while A3D 2.0 has 48 kHz, and the length of the HRTF filters are doubled to apply 3D processing to the full 48 kHz sample rate. I don't know what that means, but it sounds awesome. This sound chip also has wave tracing technology. That means that the sound reflects off of different surfaces, and it gives you reverb, and the sound is also altered based on the materials it reflects off of. You can have up to 64 reflections at once. You also get something called occlusion. That means that the sound gets altered when it comes from behind the wall. It gets muffled. As you can see here, occlusion can come directly from the source or from a reflection. I'm going to play a few games now where I turn A3D off and on to compare the difference.
So this sound card is absolutely amazing. I think my favorite game is Unreal Tournament because it has footsteps that you can listen to to try to find the enemy. And that's so much fun. And also if it, it feels a bit more tactical, I think. And in Counter-Strike, that's just cheating. I mean, I was playing on CS Assault, being outside the main building there as a counter-terrorist and then being able to listen to what is, what is happening in the hostage room. That's that's crazy. So I think they removed the support for A3D in later versions of the game or something. But yeah. And also the card that st that this started with yeah, back in the 80s with NASA, the Convoltron, 
that cost uh, twenty thousand dollars, and now we can have. Now, in 1998, we could have this sound card with this one small chip that can do so much more. That's amazing, I think. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching, and yeah, goodbye.